Life. It cannot be lived without the three basic necessities, water, shelter, and our most beloved, food. The first recording of food preservation dates back to over 3,000 years ago. Since then, mankind has attempted to preserve their food using a variety of methods. The most efficient and revolutionary method thus far is cooling. Over the centuries, cooling methods have evolved, from the Chinese harvesting ice to the modern refrigerator. But how exactly did we preserve food before the era of modern refrigerators? Salting, spicing, smoking, and drying were common methods used to keep food edible for a longer time, but these methods also changed the flavor. Rather than tasting fresh, food came out tasting excessively salty. These methods are still in use today, but are mainly used to attain a different flavor. These procedures also only preserve the food, they do not keep it fresh. Fresh foods keep their natural nutrients, vitamins, and flavor. Most of the preservation methods would alter the structure of the food, diminish nutritive essences, and change the flavor. Cooling does not change the flavor of food and keeps it fresh, but not permanently. It only slows down the loss of nutrients and the growth of bacteria. It does not stop it. Contrary to what you may believe, refrigeration does not always have to include food preservation. In fact, artificial cooling also plays a large role in saving lives. The first scientist to implement this was John Gorey. During the early 1900s, a serious case of yellow fever was spreading like wildfire. As a dedicated doctor, Gorey was determined to heal his patients as soon as possible. He believed the quickest way to do so was by maintaining a cool environment. At first, he hung basins of cold ice water from the ceilings. He later invented his own ice box. However, he was not the first. Before him, there was Jacob Perkins, who built and patented the first refrigerator. It was based on the closed-circuit refrigeration machine that was designed but never built by Oliver Evans. Around the 1800s, the refrigerator's popularity made slow progress when it was first introduced to the public. This was due to problems presented in earlier models. The biggest problem was the refrigerant, which is what allows the refrigerator to cool. Effective refrigerants used at this time were ammonia, methyl chloride, and sulfur dioxide. But these gases were highly toxic, and when they leaked from the faulty tubing, they damaged the environment and caused deaths. Major refrigerator manufacturing companies such as General Electric and Frigidaire had to collaborate to find a safer alternative. CFCs, or chlorofluorocarbons, were the chemicals found to be running through a refrigerator's coils. By the 1990s, they were discovered to be extremely harmful to the environment. Today, refrigeration is discreetly implemented into all aspects of society. With the help of refrigeration, food businesses prosper, meals are sent to troops at war, and food is shared with third world countries. You're at the Home Depot and um, you're inquiring about what makes the refrigerator work. Well, the main part of the refrigerator is our compressor, which is down right here. And what the compressor does is it cools the coolant, which um, usually becomes very, very hot from the increased pressure. Uh, the heated gas flows through the coils that are no longer apparent because they put them behind this casing so that you know they don't leave those black marks on your wall, which usually happens, and so that the refrigerator doesn't get too hot. Um, eventually, the excess heat releases into the surrounding air, so that's why when you're standing next to the refrigerator, it feels kind of you know warm. Um, and then the coolant becomes a liquid. I mean, just trying to do normal at every day-to-day -day transaction where you're trying to like heat something up, it's been in the refrigerator, or store something away that you want to eat later. Me as a college student, I live out in the refrigerator, those TV dinners, oh gosh. <laughs> or um, just simple stuff like storing meat, you'll probably have to put it in salt and that would make everyone unhealthy back in the old days or have like everything put underground. Um, I guess a day without a refrigerator, a life without a refrigerator, probably be really interesting. I'll have to think back to when I was little, just eating stuff out of the box or eating stuff that was ready made, trying to store like items like milk. Or no one understands how vital the refrigerator is to their everyday lives. Can you imagine life without it?